Where are you? I know I think you can hear me. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Biddlishly Abundant, aka me, Helen Lingard, with another wonderful guest of mine this week. And this gentleman, some of you will know, some of you won't know, is Robert G. Smith, who I have followed for at least two years. And I'm, as you might know, if you know me at all, I'm very heart based. I love to see people who are making a difference. And Robert is one of those, he makes a huge difference with his fast EFT. So I'm going to hand it over to Robert and ask him to share about his work and what he knows about law of attraction and his, and his experiences with law of attraction. So Robert, welcome. Thank you so much. I know you're very busy this week. You're there in Hawaii. So thank you for joining us. Please introduce yourself to the group, to the, to the well, group of viewers. Oh, very good. Well, I'm excited to be here. You know, um, <clears throat> law of attraction, how does it work? What is it? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. I've been around uh, the law of attraction stuff before I knew it was law of attraction. And of course, you know, I started out, you know, some of the early stuff watching, you know, the secret, you know, the secret law of attraction. But, uh, you know, with what I teach, we call it faster T. It's really faster T is um, a system about thinking and how we successfully produce how we successfully produce in our life what we have today. And, um, and it's about the law of attraction, you know, the law of attraction. So, you know, with the mindset that we have is that you're not broken, there's nothing wrong with you, and what you currently have today is a success. And that's the model of Faster of T, which, by the way, since uh, most people don't realize how our minds work and how the law of attraction works and how to get something better, we always have a tendency to look, well, I want this out there, you know, and how do you get that out there? Well, the truth is how you get that out there is that you change what's in there. And that's the key, you know. So, you know, and of course, you know, watching the, the secret, uh, you know, there's, there's this one little piece where the little plant comes up, but if you doubt, then all of a sudden it dies. Well, you know, understanding that, how your unconscious works, and your unconscious is the great manifester in our life. The unconscious and all its resources will create and manifest without our conscious efforts, which means we successfully become depressed. We successfully pick the same person who's just like our father or just our, like our mother. That is the law of attraction working in its excellence. The problem is you and I consciously say, I don't like what I've been getting and attracting and producing. How do I get something different? That's the biggest question, you know. You know, my life, the way it is today, it's, it's not by accident. It's by, by design. Even though I didn't know I was designing it, I was doing things that actually help me create a different world for myself and, and a different life. And so <clears throat> over the years, working with hundreds and hundreds of people, um, working with them and just doing what I call the basics, the basics of the unconscious cleaning, changing and transforming, they began to produce a life uh, built on the law of attraction just by changing the foundation of their own internal representations. And so that's basically what Fast Drift is about. It's about the law of attraction. It's about your success. Your life is what you have today is because you've successfully created it because you're using the law of attraction and the law of attraction is what the unconscious always does. So that's Fast Drift basically. Now, of course, there's a lot more involved. And the key really is how to get something different or how to create a new life by internal design. So that's, that's the, my gist about, you know, the law of attraction. Now, of course, there's so many stories, you know, about what, what we have created and what we work with people to create. You know, for people who've had lupus and now there's no lupus from being no longer in bed, uh, being broke and homeless and now no longer broken homeless um, to even my own personal life it's 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 a life that I would never in a billion years 
ever could imagine 25 years ago, 30 years ago. But because I did something, something that actually recreates, re, uh, rebuilding my inner world, it creates and rebuilds a total outer world that's totally different. So that's the law of attraction. This is, you know, I'm an expert at it. <laughs> What I love about your work, Robert, is when you work with people, and I've seen you transform people with your work, is you inject humor because you take them in and out of state, don't you? Yeah. Well, the, the interesting thing about how the mind works, um, uh, you know, humor, there's all kinds of things because, see, a lot of people don't really understand the mechanics of the mind. You know, we have, you know, if you're in a sad state, you're depressed, you're angry, you're fearful, we know that that is a what we'd call a trance state, a, a, a manifestation creating from your unconscious, producing it right now, today. And we know that it's not real, but it sure seems real because you have feelings, emotions, and sensations. And since when we're using, operating within the mind system, knowing how to what you call rewrite the story, dissipate the emotions, and transform the inner world, the next thing you know, they're acting totally different. I mean, we're talking about severe PTSD and totally changing a severe rape memory with a, a phone app. And 12 minutes later, the, the memory is no longer traumatic. Matter of fact, she'll laugh about it two weeks later after we did an interview. So the mind is an amazing uh, playground and how this mind has manifested the same problem everywhere we go, the same good relationship everywhere we go, the same style of relationship everywhere we go, because it's a manifester, it's a producer, and we're creators, and, and we're always creating and manifesting something. The question is, do you like what you've been manifesting successfully? You look around your world, you look at your, your bank account, you look at your relationships, you look at your health, do you like what you've been creating? And if you don't, it's easy. Just go change the source. Go change the foundation in which your unconscious is attracted. You know, everything you ever want, everything you ever desire, everything you ever wish is in front of you. The problem is, is that you're wearing the wrong set of sunglasses. And so it filters out and you can only see what you already are holding. And if you change the holdings, which is the memories, the references, the proofs, the ideas, and the, 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 the memories, if you change this, all of a sudden you see things differently. Opportunities are everywhere. Everything you'd ever want is in front of you, and you just don't see it until you start changing your inner resources. You know, there was a movie after The Secret called The Moses Code. Well, the Moses Code talks about when you see a car, they say, that's you. You manifested it. Or the truth is, you didn't manifest it. You just noticed it, and it's a part of your radar. But you give meaning to everything from your own inner, inner source. In order to have a different world, you change your meanings. Now, of course, you know, I'm an expert at helping people change their lives. I'm an expert and giving people the tools to create an abundant life. And so we will always attract, we'll always get what we hold. Now there's, now when I say that's, there is a, there is a, a complexity to this, but what you hold, you attract, and you, you, you use, you manifest, you, you deal with, and you handle from your inner representations. And so, as I always say, create a life by design instead of creating a life by default. And the default is you'll always create from your inner resources. You always see from your inner resources. So if you go inside yourself and you change the unpleasant resources and you take those memory resources and you rewrite it, that means you re-imprint it. You, you change how you represent it. You change how you see it. You change how you feel it and how you hear it, that internal change start creating a ripple effect in your future without you consciously knowing what's happened. It's like 
is like someone who comes to see me. And I remember this lady who had a severe chocolate addiction. So she created the chocolate addiction. It was so severe. Her children had to hide the candy from Easter and Halloween and Christmas. And you're, and it's, it's no, no lie. This woman would wake up from a dead sleep, flashlight in hand, crawling around those children's room, trying to find it. Chocolate became her master, became her controller, you know, and, and it couldn't be in the house. If it was in the house, it'd be wiped out because she would devour it. But it's the weird gazelle behavior. And so why would someone have manifested this problem? And really, it wasn't a problem, but it became a problem because behind the resource of this, it was actually trying to keep her in a position of safety, security, love. But she didn't have any idea. All she knew is she's controlled by it. So in a live presentation in Oklahoma City, she volunteered. And so I just started looking at this great skill of devouring and being controlled and have this great passion for chocolate. I said, well, have you ever had chocolate before? Do you have any good memories of chocolate? Yes, with my grandfather, Easter candy, you know. And there's a lot of emotional association. And then I said, well, where's the problem with chocolate? Well, I just can't stop. I'm addicted to it. I need it and all this stuff. And I said, have you ever had, um, when did it start? And she goes, well, you know, I won a trip in high school uh, to Europe. And I was all alone. I didn't know anybody. And I felt like I was all by myself. And then she discovered Belgian chocolate, Swiss chocolate, and all the different chocolates. And she kept eating on it. But here's the weird thing. When she's eating on it, it makes her feel good makes her feel love, but there is no love in the ingredients of chocolate. So her unconscious says, there's love in chocolate, that grandpa loves you, mom loves you, and now she's trying to find her love in a chocolate bar. And so she now she's digging in a well that's empty because there's no love there, and it became her master. So all I did is just put things in proper perspective. Chocolate's just chocolate and love is in people. And she just felt lonely, and all of a sudden, within 10, 15 minutes, the chocolate power was no longer controlling her. You know, a lot of people want money, or they want, they want love, or they want this, and, and they want it, but they do everything they can to not have it. Because even though they say, I want it, but their resources says, yeah, but. And it's that yeah, but inside of us, and so just by going to the memory of chocolate and put it back that it's just chocolate, putting love back in people, now chocolate will sit on her counter. She can still eat chocolate, but she only eats one. It'll sit on the table for days and weeks. There's no conscious saying, I can't have it, I can't have it. It's just peaceful. And that's what people want. They want something. But inside the resources, it says you can't. It's like someone who says, I want to be loved, but if anybody tries to love them, they don't trust them and they push them away. They want to be loved, they want to be loved, but they keep pushing them away because in their mind, their unconscious has what we call resources that's keeping them in a position they've always known. And so the law of attraction basically says what you hold in mind, you attract. It's not what you try to put in. If I try to put this phone in my head, it just doesn't go. It's outside. But if I go inside here, into my heart, my mind, my, my programmings, my true essence, which is the memories and reference we use, then we produce anything. So individuals will come to Faster T and they'll come to my trainings. And I say, if you do this one thing, and do this one thing consistently, the whole world before you will begin to change and you'll be doing your heart's desire. You're practicing, you'll be attracting who you are because who you are is what you carry. Who you are is what you're using to manifest. And so I just say, address the unpleasance. And so if you can be alone within yourself, within your own mind, within your own world and your triggers, you clean up the disruption, you'll track what your focuses are. You'll track what you're holding. This is the law of attraction.
we are uh, attraction magnets. We're always creating. We're creating from our inner resources. Now, if you have a lot of bad resources, you're going to be creating and manifesting and creating a lot of bad stuff. And if the good stuff shows up, you know what you're going to do? Say, pardon me, I'm busy. I got something I've got to get done. Because you don't consciously, you don't consciously try to make yourself feel bad. You don't consciously try to screw yourself up. It's an unconscious who's the unconscious manifester and producer. So learning how to drive your unconscious will show you how to create anything. Now again, consciously, I want a car. You know, I don't need a car. You know, I have. I recently bought a car this last year. Now I had a great car. I mean, it only had nine thousand miles, but I kept watching this new. I have a. I'm a Dodge fan. I'm a Mopar guy. You know, and and I know how the law of attraction works, but I still play it. But sometimes without thinking. So I came out with a new car, and I'm watching the commercials. Like, wow, that's really fast. You know, and then. I keep watching commercials and I keep watching them. I think, wow, that'd be really cool, you know? And next thing I know, I go to the car lot and I look at them and I walk around them and I test drive it. I say, oh no, I'm just test driving. So here I get the feel of this car. And then of course, the next thing you know, I own the car, you know? So here it is, I'm owning this car. I don't need the car, but I love the car. It's amazing, you know? But how did I manifest that? Well, in my mind, I, I've seen the idea. I've seen the idea and I begin to internally represent the idea, thinking about it, imagining it, feeling it. And, and of course, next thing I know, I go test drive it. And next thing I know, I own one. This is the law of attraction. Incredible. It's, a, it's, it's the same way, it's the same way with someone who has panic attacks. Now, how do people have panic attacks? I'm a panic attack expert. They do the right, they do exactly the same thing I did. You get a car. They, they worry about it, they imagine it, they recall other people, they listen to other people's stories, and they share stories, and they imagine it, and they feel it. Next thing they know, they can have one outside, and they get so good at it, they can have one in the bedroom, in the bathroom, in the kitchen, because we're great creators. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned that lady with the chocolate, you only you tapped them for 15 minutes. How long? I mean, I know it can take years, but how does it? How do you manage to do it in fifteen minutes? Because I've seen people before and after in your YouTube. You know how one lady was a, a, a wreck, crying and really anxious, whatever. And then when you finish tapping, the transformation is incredible. How yeah. do you know how long? I mean, you know, I know it's how long this piece of string, but well, how so long? How long does it take? Well, here's here's the difference. We got person A. Person A has a problem. Let's say, I don't know, let's say a panic attack, for example. All right? Person A and then person B have panic attacks. Now, they both experience the exact same experience. Person A never thinks about it, never spends any time with it. Uh, they don't go to groups to talk about it. They don't read articles about it. They just avoid it. Person B, they had one. They think about it, they read about it, and then they start having others and they start connecting. So one person, it may take a little bit longer because they have a greater emotional investment in it. They spent time with it, they had more experiences similar, and the brain will organize it, structure it all together, and then we've got, like we call a good library. Person A has a small library, all right? So one person goes really fast, one person goes really slow because of the neural, the neural information. Uh, the reason why we're so precisely changing big things is because we're actually going to the real mechanics. You know, mental mechanics is where it's at. You know, I've studied a lot of stuff. I mean, NLP, hypnosis, you know, you name the therapy, I've tried it. You know, I've done a lot of different studies, and I've started putting things together that actually works. Now, if you know the basics of thinking, the basics of how you manifest, and you work with the basics, you can change anything. So for me, why can I do a major emotional trauma? Like I just, I'm here in Abilitat and I'm doing work. And we're talking about this young girl who's 25 years old and she's been in, oh, let's see, how old is she? Yeah, she's 20, 25 years old and she's been in 25 rehabs and she's still addicted. 25 rehabs. And so 
I said, well, let's go. Let's get the worst memories of your life because I know addictions are driven by pain. People who are addicted, they're using the number one coping skill that all of, all of you use. When something feels bad, you want to escape. You want to avoid. I call it avoidaholic and escapeaholic. So they feel bad. You don't know how to deal with your bad feelings, and so you want to go over here. Well, the bad feelings are still there. And I said, let's go. Let's write the list of memories. Now, she had major experiences for five years of severe trauma. And so there's, say, I have five memories. Five memories she'd never shared, never talked about, but never gone there to clean up. The reason why what we do is so precise is we go to the structure of memory, how memories are represented. And I can change a PTSD, which is all we did today. PTSD, five memories, and I did it all within 45 minutes. And we're talking about not little ones. We're talking about crying severely and shaking, want to puke. And yet when we get done, I say, tell me the story again. And it's like I went to the grocery store, bought a carton of milk, and I had a bowl of cereal. Then we went back and we rewrote the story. Because, see, if people understand memories are not real, they're just creations of the unconscious, making your body feel as if it were real, like you're really back there, but you're not. And what we do that this, these programs are just programs installed in your unconscious, and it's a how to operate, which, by the way, this is how the law of attraction is. You have a program, and by this program, you're going to manifest from it in the future. And your mind may stack a lot more on top of it. And the next thing you know, you're manifesting, creating an amazing, stressful, scary, but addicted, traumatized life. But if you go to the basics, which is memory one, memory two, memory three, etc., and you change one memory. He said, I mean, she's crying. She said, oh my God, all these years I've been in therapy and you changed it in one session? One session. You changed the resource that I've been using to, to run from all my stuff. Now that is, and she said, well, why didn't other people say there's no one else who does what I do because I created it. But I brought all my friends from around the world. We brought people from Australia, from, from let's see, we got Australia, we got from France, and we got from Belgium, we got all over, US too. And they all come to be trained to do the addiction protocol and help these young individuals change their life. And I'm telling you, you know, there's no thrill in seeing a child who's 25 years old or an older person We've been dragging a, a, a resource that successfully manifested addictions, hurts, and pains, and change it, and we turn it into something beautiful. They now can go out and be with her son, be out there and create a relationship, and have a job, and no longer be a slave to a drug or a memory or pain. It's absolutely incredible. I mean, like I say, I shared before, I think probably it's another call. I've watched so many of your videos and I've seen people transform. It's just incredible. And Robert, please share with us if you, if you can. I mean, I've seen where you've shared what you went through when you were younger. And a while back, you shared a photograph before you started Fast DFT. And, and the difference between then and now is incredible. So did you use the Fast DFT on yourself to achieve that? Or what did you do to help yourself? Well, of course. <laughs> well, the, my, story, my story basically, uh, the photo that you saw was right before tapping. Um, you know, because I'm the oldest of six kids. My mother uh, was 14, ran away, got pregnant. I'm a bastard child. Uh, by the time my mother was 19, she had four kids. Um, I was, you know, I was hurt. I was a hurt person. I wasn't very smart, wasn't very good at school. Um, got married when I was 22. I had three children. Um, I, I never really, you know, my dad was an angry person. We were worthless kids. We didn't have much value in ourselves because of how he had felt about himself. So the, the things began to change when I bought a tape series at a garage sale, and that was uh, Anthony Roberts, Your Unlimited Power, which is about NLP, No Linguistic Programming. I started listening to this and started shifting my perception of the world, my world, 
that I could have something better. I could be something better. And by changing my viewpoint of myself was the beginning stages of my changes. Um, again, the basics is the basics. You do the basics, you get the changes. So I started with that. And my, you know, when I got married, my wife, before we married, she said she was sexually abused as a child. And you know, at 22, you know what to do with that, right? You don't know what to do with it, so you say, okay. Now, I was abused too. I had physical abuse, emotional abuse. And so we were a perfect match. We matched each other perfectly. Law of attraction is working. You pick someone that you resonate with, right? And so around 18 years in the marriage, um, some bad things were going on in her life. And I honestly believe it's because my daughter reached the same age and she was, she was abused. So I started studying, you know, I've been listening to NLP and I want to get trained in NLP, the guy locally. And uh, I just didn't feel very comfortable with him, but I talked to one of the students. She said, you should try the EMO free, emotional freedom technique, which is EFT. I bought the course, it was $169. I bought his training course and later on I bought his ultimate therapist course. And I started using EFT. Now this is the original version of EFT. Mm -hmm. Even though I have this, the humming and the counting, I did it thousands of times. Now my passion was to help my wife. My passion was to help me. My passion was to help anyone who would stand still long enough. And I would tap on anybody and everybody who came my way. Even at the gas station, I ran out of gas twice. One of the girls got tapped on. You know, and, and so my passion was this. And so tapping the EFT style, I knew nothing about tapping until I came across this. But you know what? This, is, this works. But at the same time, I was studying NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. At the same time, you know, here it is. I never thought I could have anything new, a new car, you know, because, you know, I can't work on it. I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough money to pay anybody. And so today, you know, I was a car guy, you know, so um, I had a bunch of junk cars and I'd sell parts, you know. But after I listened to the tape series, Anthony said to become an investor. And I would listen to things over and over again. And the guy across the street was sharing how he bought this property on back taxes. I said, how do you do it? He told me how to do it. I went and studied, and I went and bought my first property. I paid 450 bucks for it, and I traded it for a car, which I sold for $4,500. I bought another one, 750 bucks. I sold it five, six years later for $45,000. And it's all because I kept investing in my inner world investing in myself this is how we have a better life you can't have a better life if you don't change it in the world exactly and so eft i started doing this now of course i bought his ultimate therapist kit and the ultimate therapist we had Mar marilyn gordon he had Fred gallo and they had dr larry nims now dr larry nims resonated with me and he used a four tap process which i used i implemented and restructured how to tap, which at the time, I wouldn't try to create something new. I, I, my passion was to be a team on the EFT, Gary Craig. So I started using this and it working and it's working and I add more and I studied and NLP and mix it all together and eventually I created Faster EFT. I didn't mean to, I just wanted to learn and I wanted to help people. And that's, that's how Faster T. So did I use Faster T? The truth is I use it every day. I use it when things bother me. I use it when people bother me. I use it in the hard times. I use it in the good times. Because, see, I'm stuck with me. There's nothing inside me but me. When I start to love myself, like myself, and accept myself for who I am, what my strengths are, where my weaknesses are, then my world changes, just like your world. If you curse yourself and dislike yourself, you despise yourself, you reject yourself, you get more. That's the law of attraction too. So I know that. Now it took me a while to get there. It took me a while. And I've had some pretty rough times in the last five years, definitely the last year and a half because of my success, because of my passion, because of my heart. And it's normal for people to, you know, it's like somebody said, well, you know, here it is. I'm doing something great. Why is somebody complaining? I said, because complainers complain. Smear, smear, haters hate. Who are you? 
And I say, love you. Now, when they do what they do, you, you know, it's like I was talking to my grandmother. My grandmother, she should be 90 this next month. Um, my grandmother at 84 years old, she bought a computer. Now she said, I bought a computer because I don't want the world to pass me by. So here she bought a computer, a little laptop, and she's trying to use it. Now, I'm, you know, I just create a video on YouTube where I'm eating my ginger cookie, and I'm sitting out there by the snow. You know, and, and I'm saying, you know, uh, I would love to be in Australia. I've never been to Australia. I want to be in Australia. I'd rather see white sandy beaches than white snow. And two weeks later, I'm going to Australia, and I'm doing a seminar for 45 people. I sent this video to my grandmother. And of course, in the video, I talked about how um, my kids at one time wanted me to go buy pizza, and there was a lot of snow, and it was scary. And I said, I don't go buy pizza. I said, I'll tell you what. I saw a TV on the news where they're taking pictures in the snow. I said, I'll tell you what. I'll go buy uh, pizza if you all get in your swimming suit and go out in the snow and look at pictures. I got my swimming suit on. My wife got my swimming suit on. The next door neighbor, she wanted pizza. So she came and got her swimming suit on. We took pictures, and I went and bought pizza. Now, I sent this video to my grandmother. And I just thought, well, she's going to be so proud of me. I get a phone call. Robert, I have something I need to talk to you about. How can you make those babies stand out in the snow? <laughs> Everybody, she said, little bitty babies. Now, we're, my youngest was, was 11. My oldest was like 16. So here it is. She made up a story, and I go, oh. And I go, but this is Grandma. This is her world, not mine. Yeah. Because, see, what comes out of me is about me, and what comes out of Grandma is about Grandma, what comes out of you is about you, what comes out of Gary is about Gary, what comes out of Susan is about Susan. Because we express our inner worlds. And so I always say, clean up your inner world. Learn how to love you and like you, and what you represent within you, you're going to attract. And that's, that's how it works. That's so true. It all starts and ends with us. It's absolutely so true. And that's why there's so much bad in the world because people don't love themselves enough. And like you say, when people have a go at you, it's because they don't have enough love for themselves. So, well, I, would, I would like to say something about this love. You know, the weird thing about love is that your mother changed your diapers. Your father fed you. Your father, in his own mind, he was hard on himself. He learned to be hard on himself, too. Where did he learn from? From his father. This is a style of love. And so it, for some people, you remember, the girl who had an addiction to chocolate, which is causing her harm, there was love there, too. Mm -hmm. so, so this love style is not what you call the upper level of love. For someone to put yourself down and to think harm of yourself is love. It's low-level protection love, which has pain involved. So... What we want to do is elevate the style of love, release the pain that is connected to it, and then move on. Because there's a lot of distortion around, well, I don't love myself. Well, if you hate yourself, there's love behind hate. Because the opposite of love is love. Anyway, just to take that there. <laughs> so just before we go, Robert, um, so somebody tapping, how often would you recommend, I mean, how often do you tap? I always find it amazing because one of you or one of the people who recommended you, William Wood, um, is very successful like yourself, and yet he still taps every day, multiple times a day. And I find it interesting that, you know, it's like anybody, whatever you're doing, those, uh, the, um, yeah, go on. Let me explain. Tapping, let, let, let me, let's give the basics here. When something happens in your life, how do you deal with it? Well, most people will deal with it. They'll suffer through it, they'll complain about it, they'll think about it, and then move on, which has a tendency to build more problems. Tapping, is, it creates amazing changes, but tapping is like a toothbrush. It's like toilet paper. You use it to process and deal with your life problems. If you don't tap, then you could create yourself a new set of problems. I tap when things bother me. It's my coping skill. Tapping brings you back to basics, brings you back to the moment. Tapping gives you control. People who tap are wise. People who pretend like they have no problems and don't deal with it, they deal with it the old way, creates a new set of rashes and bad teeth. 
So tapping is something you'll do the rest of your life. You'll do it on your deathbed. It's a sign of emotional intelligence. That's fantastic, Robert. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to share before we finish today? Oh, one thing I'd like to share is this. Learn how to like yourself, love yourself, be kind within yourself. Because what you do within yourself, you do to others. Mainly and most importantly is what you do and you train your children to do and your loved ones. So if, you're, if you can be alone within yourself, by yourself, you're in good company and you feel good. If you have a problem with this, make friends with yourself and your inner world. Because you are an example your children will follow. And you know, you're stuck with you. Might as well be kind to you. And that's what I can say. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Robert. And thank you for joining us, everybody. And I'll be back. I'm not sure I'll be back next week because I'm traveling next week. But I'll be back very soon with another amazing interview. And I'll leave the details below where you can contact Robert and where you can contact me. Thank you so much again, Robert. Peace.